All right, question 21 asks about a weak acid, strong base titration. So if you look at it, our curve is going to look like this. Whoa. Curve kind of looks like that. Ultimately, they're asking us about equivalence point. So equivalence point is going to be at 25 milliliters to go up here. This is our equivalence point. If you notice, the pH at equivalence is around 9. Why? Whenever you titrate a weak acid HA with a strong base, so imagine the general formula for a weak acid is HA, you're adding OH minus, ultimately you're going to make water at equivalence plus A minus. A negative ion is going to act as a conjugate base, so it's going to be basic, so the pH at equivalence of a weak acid titration will always be above 7, so the equivalence point for a weak acid strong base titration would be Roman numeral 3 for question 21. Question 22, which of the following is true concerning a titration of a weak acid at the strong base? We just saw it. We know that the equivalence point is not 7. That's only for a strong acid, strong base. At equivalence, there is no excess moles of acid nor base. That's the definition of equivalence. So B and C get tossed out right there. D, at equivalence point, the solution is composed of the conjugate base of a weak acid. We know that's true because if we take HA, I just did it on the last one, H2O, ultimately what do I end up with? Uh, wait, actually, that's a weak acid. Actually, we're talking about titration, so we go OH minus. It's going to be equal to water plus A minus is the conjugate base. So there you go. You'll have the D is your correct answer for that one. And we know it's not a acidic. Point. Next one, 23. What is the molar ratio of sodium acetate required to create a buffer solution having a pH of 4.84? Whenever you see buffer solution, you should think Hasselhoff. So I know that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the acid and its salt or its conjugate base. So I know I have a pH of 4.84. I need pKa. So if I take the negative log of this, I get 4.74 plus and then the log. And my I'm, at, I'm solving for the ratio. So it's asking you what's the ratio of acid to sodium acetate. So then the next thing I need to do is solve for x. So I go to solve for x. So the first thing I do is I take 4.84 minus 4.74. Ultimately, I'm going to end up with 0 0.10 equals the log of x. How do I get rid of log? I come over to the other side. And I'm going to go 10 to uh, 0.1. So when I pop in 10 to 0.1, I end up with... 1.26 is equal to x. But remember the ratio is salt to acid. It's asking me acid to salt. So the last thing I have to do is take the inverse of it. So the ratio is salt to acid. I need acid to salt. So what I do is I take 1 over 1.26. So I do that and I get point, point 0.79. But the closest one for rounding you would have a point 0.80 would be the ratio you would need to create a buffer solution pH. Next one, 24. What is the pH of a solution that's 0.24 acetic acid and 0.52 sodium acetate? Cancel the heartbreaker and ultimately what I have is CH2 H3O2 and C2 H3O2 minus. So what I have there is a conjugate acid base pair which means I'm going to Hasselhoff this. So I'm going to go pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the acid and salt on top, and I'm just popping it. 0.24 goes on the bottom, 0.52 goes on the top. I take the log of that plus pK in this case is going to be 4.74. So then I just do that. ultimately when you do all the calculations, I come up with a pH of 5.08 is the value I get after I take the log of this and add it to 4.74 E. As soon as you know you have a buffer solution, you have a weak acid and a conjugate base. You have an acid and an ion, a base and an ion, you know it's a buffer solution. Next one, 25. Buffer solution is made from formic acid and sodium formate. So what am I going to make? HCOO2, um, so basically, and then the, the ion is going to be uh, CHO2 minus would represent the ion. So they're saying... Um, what would be the net ionic equation when a small amount of sodium hydroxide, well really it's just hydroxide. Here's what you remember when you have a buffer solution. You have an acid and you have a conjugate base. 
Remember, whenever you have a buffer solution working, it's always a combo of an acid and a base acid and a base coming together to be neutralized. So if this is my base. What am I going to need? I'm going to need my acid will spring into action. So HC HO2 reacts with the base. What you're going to do is you can transfer an H over. You're going to create water plus CHO2 minus. So that's what you're looking for. We always show strong bases as OH minus, so that can't be the net ionic. That automatically can't be the net ionic. That doesn't have OH minus either. So then we're basically down to either B or C. There's my OH minus. There's my weak acid because a base needs an acid to cancel it out. And there's the rest of my equation. Keep that in mind. Acid and base always have to combine together. When you make a buffer solution, that's what neutralizes each other. Next one, weak acid is dissolved in sodium fluoride, so I have HF and F minus. Why? Because sodium is a heartbreaker. Look, now I have a weak acid buffer system. HCl is added. Well, if I add H plus, if I'm adding an acid, what do I need to counteract it? I need a base. In this case, I need a conjugate base. I have a weak acid and a conjugate base. Conjugate base leaps in. Basically, what happens is ultimately that is going to be the ion that's going to keep the pH from changing. Ultimately, we're going to put together HF and wait, uh, water is the reaction. Remember, in a buffer system, acid and a base always react. Which of the following is the most effective buffer system? So what we do when we go to pick a buffer, the key is you pick a buffer that has a pH as close to the pKa value as possible. So I have Ka values for all these. So my first step is on my calculator, I'm going to sit pause it for a second. I'm going to take the negative log of all these to get the pK. So here are all my pK values. I found all my k, k, pK values by taking the negative log of all my Ka's. Ultimately, D is going to be the correct answer. The reason why is D is the closest value. My pK value is closest to the desired pH, so that would be the one I would select for the buffer system. Okay, And that does our roundup of all the quiz star problems. So whatever problems you need, hopefully I worked out. Make sure you study. Make sure you review the thermochemistry questions. Um, definitely make sure key couple key things you need um, would be, for example, if I asked you a couple quick reminders. If I asked you to find out the temperature at which something becomes spontaneous, remember delta G is the time when something becomes spontaneous. So ultimately, if you have delta G is equal to zero, what does that mean? It means T, the temperature at spontaneity, would be delta H over delta S. Plug that in and then basically make sure S is in kilojoules. Adjust it, divide the two, and you have your temperature at spontaneity. Also, a good thing to remember is if something gets hotter, that means it's exothermic. So that means the sign for H will be negative. If something gets colder, that means it's endothermic, and the sign for that would be positive. So the delta H values, when we talk about thermochemistry, the idea is if something gets hotter, it means it's releasing heat into the surroundings, so that's why it feels hot. If something feels colder, it means it's endothermic and it's absorbing heat from the surroundings. Those are two key things that probably would help you tomorrow, so pay attention to. All right? Thanks.